Next up in the countdown, the transporter erector, or TE, will begin to retract away from Falcon 9. That is the large trust structure you see standing next to the rocket. It is hinged at the base and connected to the launch mount beneath the first stage. First, we'll see the clamp arms open around the second stage. Thanks for pressing for strong back retract. And that's a good indication that we are on track for an on-time liftoff as the transporter erector prepares to retract. Like I said, first we'll see the clamp arms open around the second stage, and then the TE will begin to pivot back, slowly swinging away from the rocket. It'll reach full recline by T minus three minutes and 40 seconds. You may also hear the TE called the strongback. It's the same structure. Strongback retract has started. Different name. And as you heard there, strongback retract has begun. So watch for those arms to start to open. The TE does roll the Falcon 9 out to the pad. It also raises it vertical and stays connected through the final seconds to launch. It provides fuel, power, telemetry, and command connections between ground systems and the rocket. We're just about to see those clamp arms start to open around the second stage of the vehicle. Those clamps help to stabilize the second stage during propellant loading and are also there to prevent movement in high winds. Once they're open, the rocket will be fully free at the top. And there you can see on your screen, those clamp arms have fully opened. The launch tower strong back is now beginning to move away from Falcon 9, allowing it to stand freely before liftoff. The TE has two components, a strong back alongside Falcon 9 and a launch mount underneath. The launch mount has four hold downs that release at T0. The strong back is hinged to that launch mount and is rotating about two degrees away from Falcon 9. At liftoff, the strong back will move 45 degrees away to clear the way for Falcon 9's launch. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. The first stage and second stage should finish loading liquid oxygen. Stage one LOX load is complete. And there you just heard, the first stage has finished LOX loading. Liquid oxygen loading for the first stage is the final propellant load for the booster. The tanks are also pressurized using helium, which is chilled so that it stays compatible with the cryogenic plumbing. During flight, that pressurization helps force propellant into the engines as the tanks empty. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will enter startup. At that point, the rocket's onboard flight computers will take over, and from there on out, the countdown will be fully autonomous. Just inside of T minus 2 seconds, the nine Merlin 1D engines will ignite, and once they're at full power, Falcon 9 will lift off the pad and begin its climb to orbit. After that engine start, the Falcon vehicles are held down until all vehicle systems are verified as functioning normally before we release, release for liftoff. Stage two lock load is complete. And liquid oxygen for the second stage is now fully loaded, completing prop load for the upper stage. You can see white condensation clouds starting to vent from the rocket. As the liquid oxygen warms slightly inside the tanks, some of it will boil off and that gas is vented to manage pressure. When the vented oxygen hits the warm, humid outside air, it will instantly condense into clouds, which is the same principle as your breath on a cold morning. Ground gas close outs. Standing by now for confirmation that Falcon 9 is in startup at the T minus one minute mark. Falcon 9 is in startup. As you just heard, the autonomous flight computers have taken over the launch countdown and stages one and two are pressurizing for launch. Go for launch. We just heard the launch of the final go. With that, let's listen into the countdown. T minus 30 seconds. T-minus, 15 seconds. 
T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. And lift off. Go Falcon, go Spain Sat and G2. Vehicles pitching downrange. MOD chamber pressure is nominal. As you can see, Falcon 9 has lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The Falcon flight computer will now begin throttling down engines in preparation for max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure. Power and telemetry nominal. Good call out there for a nominal state of the vehicle. Vehicle is supersonic. Max Q. As you just heard, we've just passed through Max Q. Again, that is the maximum aerodynamic pressure the vehicle will experience. In order to achieve orbit and avoid being pulled back to Earth, the Falcon 9 rocket needs to reach a velocity of roughly 17,500 miles per hour horizontally. To assist with this, the first stage performs a gravity turn, initiated by a pitchover maneuver just 10 seconds into flight. This is also the end, oh, sorry. The engines gimbal a small amount for about five seconds, slowly turning the first stage into an angled trajectory. This angled trajectory combined with, combined with gravity's pull will place the rocket into the final horizontal flight path. You can track our progress to or orbit by keeping an eye on the first and second stage telemetry in the bottom corners of your display. Now we're gonna have several events coming up in quick succession, starting with main engine cutoff or MECO when we shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Following that, the first and second stages will separate. Following that, we'll have the first ignition of the MVAC engine, also known as SES-1. SES-1 will shortly be followed by fairing separation. Stage separation confirmed. Main engine cutoff. And back startup. And there you heard and saw those events that happened back to back. Miko, stage step, and SES-1. As a reminder, the first stage will not be recovered today. In preparation for this, we removed the landing legs and grid fins to decrease the mass of the first stage and save them for use on future missions. But for now, we say to the first stage, Thank you and farewell. Fairing separation is next in just a few seconds. We will be attempting to retrieve both fairing halves once they fall back to Earth using our recovery vessel, Doug. Fairing separation confirmed. And as you just heard, fairing separation has been confirmed. These fairings will orient themselves with gas, thrust, gas thrusters for entry into the atmosphere. As they near the ocean, each fairing half, we use a gas-powered deployer to release a parachute. The fairing computer will send commands that steer the fairing to the ocean landing where Doug will attempt to recover them. 